Welcome to anyone watching, it's Craig at mysimpit.co.uk and welcome to part 32 of the front dash build. In this video we'll look at the upfront controller, we'll look at some of the main considerations around its design and then look to construct it. Let's buckle up. The starting point for the upfront controller was to replicate the process I followed for the multifunction colour displays, but with just a few improvements. So the MFCDs were made up of a 3D printed enclosure, printed circuit boards, illuminated tactile switches, and then 3D printed caps. I'm looking to use the same again for the upfront controller but the main change will be the 3D printed caps in terms of the engraving on the top of them. Previously the cap was made up entirely of PLA, which is not the hardest material to engrave into. It can be quite brittle and it can, the surface can break away uh, slightly, which limits the definition that you can get. This wasn't much of an issue for the MFCDs because most of the buttons were just engraved with a white square. The upfront controller by comparison has a large number of buttons with text, so I did want greater definition, improved definition this time in that lettering. So I begin by modeling the upfront controller in Fusion. So we can see the front fascia and just the button that will be used for the master caution. And let's go ahead and have a look at that with all of the caps in place. We can see the back of the caps now. So all of these will be 3D printed and they're designed in such a way at the back that they'll, they'll just click onto the tactile switch. It'll be made up of a number of rear layers, which we can see now. There'll be distribution rails and various input points for power. And finally it will be wrapped in the enclosure that we can see there. So to this point I'm mirroring the process I followed for the MFCDs. But what I'm really looking for is to improve the engraving of the caps. So as a precursor to making the caps I'll start with the fascia. So in this case I'm going to machine the fascia twice. The end mill will be the same for all of the external and internal cuts, but for the engraving, it's the cutting tool we see now that will change. So I'll use one uh, with a V bit that's 15 degree with a 0.2 tip, and then the other will be with a 10 degree 0.1 tip, and then we can compare between them and see the difference it might make. And the results are very encouraging. We can see at the top the typical V-bit that's used, but also the new one we've trialled at the bottom. So that's a change of cutting tool that I will use on the caps. Now we can see those caps on screen now, ready for machining. But I've also trialled something with a different type of font. The first text I select, as can be seen, is the one I've used at this point. It's a five line font. But what I'm keen to do here is to use one which the cutting tool is not passing over as many times. So moving on, you can see I've looked at a one line font, which I've not done to this point. So combining that with a different cutting tool, those together should allow us to make much smaller text, smaller than I've done to this point, but it should still be legible. So we're at a point now where they've all been machined and the results look great. And the other key parts that will go alongside this, we'll just take a look at. For the upfront controller, as opposed to the MFCD, the caps are comprised of two parts, the acrylic top that we just saw, and these caps that are 3D printed in transparent PLA. We then have the PCB, which I've soldered the tactiles into place, and then the, the fascia that we've chosen, the one with the, the finer text. The cap, as mentioned, has two parts. We've got the acrylic top, 
which is glued to the clear transparent PLA print. I'll then be painting all around the sides grey and then running some tests to check that the bat lighting is all sealed in. Before doing that, we'll just take a moment now to look at the illuminated text. And that's exactly what I was looking for. And it might be that I'll revisit the MFCDs in the future to replace the caps. It's not just that the lettering's clearer, but the light distribution's more even across them. We're quite far along at this point, and a lot of the electrical wiring's done at the back. Some of the caps just need a bit of a tidy up around the outside rim. With the exception of the master caution button, this will all be driven by a keyboard encoder. So I'll just take a bit of time to put the extra wiring in place at the end of the encoder and program it and just test all the inputs. So this is based on keyboard bindings. I do like this because it allows usage of the panel with other sims or other software. So we'll take a look now at the panel. Completed, the enclosure is not produced yet and I can't install it into the front dash frame because ultimately this will sit on top of the front brow and glare shield which I haven't yet designed or made but everything's here now ready for when that time comes. I'm happy with the improvement I got with the lettering of the caps. It's definitely clear and legible and all that's needed now is just a little bit of a tidy up at the edges of the buttons. As regards the six buttons underneath the master caution switch, I may change those in the future in line with the A10C2 or some other shortcut bindings I might put in place within the sim. And that's a good thing with these caps, they're easily interchangeable. In the next video we'll be looking at the design of the front brow and the glare shield, so I look forward to sharing that soon. Thanks for watching.